Hey everybody, my name is Daryl Bear. Welcome back to my Mondays. So today I'm going to be talking to you about making double-sided shaders. A user on YouTube or a subscriber on YouTube was having some problems with the Mila material creating a double-sided shader. So I uh, kind of helped out a little bit with that. He actually has also discovered a bug and, and, a, and a workaround for that. So I'll be sharing with you the bug and the fix for it. And I'm going to be walking you through the process of doing a double-sided shader in two different ways. One, using a standard Maya workflow using utility nodes and standard Maya materials. And the second way is using the Mila material, which has the advantage of speed and being a much more modern workflow. So what we've got here is we've got a simple tree. And what we want to do is we want to have the top edge of the leaves have one material and the bottom of the leaves have another material. And this is something that you do in lots of different situations like playing cards. You'd want the face of the playing card to be one material and the back side of the playing card to be another material. Another example might be a label on a bottle. You'd want to have the printed label visible on the front, but if you look through the glass bottle on the back side, you might want to have it be white paper. So there's lots of um, times where you're going to want to do this kind of double-sided shader trick. So I'm going to walk you through the process of setting that up. So what we've got here is we've got a simple leaf and on this leaf, I've got a shading network that I built that kind of adds water drops to it. And I want to have a different shader on the back side that doesn't have water drops. So we're going to kind of bend that a little bit. And we're going to look at this guy. And you can see that obviously we'd want to have a different material on the back side of those faces. So let's go ahead and check out this shader really quickly just to see how I've built it up using standard Maya materials. I've got a texture map going into the diffuse channel, pretty straightforward. I've got this alpha channel that's going into transparency. And then I've got these water droplets, which were just square images that were, you know, if I saw this guy, you can see that they're just this kind of water droplets. Now I've also used the water droplets to go ahead and or I've also got this black and white map that represents the specularity and the reflection. And I've multiplied into that guy using the gain attribute, um, the same little leaf texture map. So we're not getting specularity in the areas of the black and we're not getting specular in the areas or reflections in the areas of the black. And then I've just kind of piped that through a couple of HSV nodes. So if we solo those guys by hitting the S button, you can see that the reflections are a little bit brighter than the specularity. And I just kind of remap those colors ever so slightly. And the end result ends up being this shader, pretty straightforward. So now what we want to do is we want to have a separate shader for when we, we see the back side of this, this guy, right? So to do that, I'm going to use a few nodes inside of Maya to, to get us there. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to grab a sample or info node. So I hit the tab key to start typing in to create nodes in the node editor or the hypershade window, and I'll bring up this sample or info node. So this allows you to sample a variety of things. And we're going to be using the flipped normal. Which way are the normals facing? If they're facing one way, we're going to render with one material. If they're facing another way, we're going to render with a second material. So we're going to be taking this sampler info node and shoving that into a condition node. So if we jump in here and hit the tab key one more time, I start to write out condition. So we'll grab this condition node. And this is a nice little workhorse inside of Maya. It just compares the first term to the second term and it runs the operator. So we're going to be basically driving that first term with this sample or info node. So we're going to be dragging out the flipped normal. So we're going to say flipped normal goes to first term. So what Maya is going to do, the software renderer is going to do is it's going to go through and every time it samples a pixel, it's going to say, all right, I need to figure out what color to make this pixel underneath, you know, that I'm, that I'm trying to trying to shade. It's going to go and it's going to say, well, let me run my sample or info, which way is a normal facing? All right, well, if it's facing in a positive direction, use, use this material. If it's facing in a negative direction, use this other material. So it's basically going to do that for every pixel that's being sampled and, and shaded. So what we're going to do is we're going to drag and drop this guy into our true. So we'll just grab the out color, pretty straightforward, and we'll put that into if true. So now we're going to go ahead and we're going to texture map our false with something like, um, I don't know, we'll just do a simple Maya Lambert, something that's really easy to see, and we'll make that guy be bright blue. Great. So now that we've got that done, we've got this condition that, that's going through and, and trying to figure out you know, well, what's going on? Am I, am I going to be, am I going to be a leaf or am I going to be a blue Lambert? So we want to assign that to this piece of geometry. Now notice if I click on that guy and say, go to assign, I don't have that option, right? This isn't something that a software renderer knows how to deal with or even viewport 2.0. So we need to essentially get this guy into a form that the renderers can use. And we're just going to do that by simply creating a surface shader. So if we type surface, so S U R F A C. So we'll get this surface shader down here. This is a standard Maya, Maya shader. 
that guy is going to now take this condition node and make it something useful. If we put that to out color, we can now assign this and you can see that there's a little bit of the blue sticking through back there, right? So you can see the blue, you can see the green. So that's the software render in my material view. Now, if I assign this guy to my piece of geometry here, you'll notice that it doesn't have the ability to, to figure out how to do that, right? It, it, can't, it can't show that guy in viewport 2.0, which is okay. A couple of little things that I wanna to do to just to finish this off, I wanna go ahead and just make sure that my transparency is textured here and we'll grab the out transparency on that guy also. So now we've got that kind of set up. If we jump over here and just do a really quick software render on this, you will see that we now have a material that is, is doing what we want, pretty straightforward. So that's cool, that's great. So what we're gonna do now is we're going to assign this material to our maple tree. So if we jump back over to our channel box and get our trees turned on, we'll just say select all of these guys right here and we'll assign this material to it. All right, so let's go ahead and just get our camera framed up a little bit better something kind of like that. And we'll see how long this guy takes to render using the standard Maya material. All right, so that took some serious time with that double-sided shader using the standard Maya materials. So let's go ahead and save this out. It took about three minutes and let's go ahead and jump over to our Hypershade window and let's start building up a similar type of shading network, but this time using the Mila material, which will be much more efficient at rendering this. So we'll go ahead and we'll jump into our create menu and we'll say uh, materials. So if you go to mental ray materials and you grab the Mila material, it's going to come up pretty straightforward. And the first thing that we wanna do is we wanna start texture mapping a couple of these things. All right, so we're gonna go ahead and grab that diffuse texture and just shove that into our diffuse. And the next thing that we wanna do is we want to go ahead and texture map the Material Properties has this thing called visibility. So visibility is essentially just a cutout, right? So it's gonna allow us to cut that shader out pretty straightforward. So we'll just grab that guy and shove that in there. Now the next thing that we wanna do is we wanna to start to go ahead and add onto this guy, and I'm just gonna switch over to hardware to make it a little bit faster. We're gonna add onto this guy another layer. So the way the mater Mila material works is by telling it and giving it the information it needs to, to get the effect you want. So if you wanna have specularity reflections, you need to add that as a layer. If you wanted to have transparency that was texture mapped, you know, that wasn't done with a cutout, you'd have to add that in. So it's really very straightforward. Like think of it as sort of stacking different materials on top of each other or different finishes on top of each other. So for this example, we're gonna stack a weighted layer on top of this of a specular reflection to get our water droplets. So with that done, we're gonna go ahead and we're jump over to our utilities. And in our utilities, we're gonna grab that remap spec and just put that to the color. And the next thing that we want to do is we want to adjust down this weighting. We don't want that weighting to be um, fully reflective. We want it to be only reflective where those little dots are using this remap HSV reflect that we had from the other shader. So this is pretty straightforward to do. We want to map this guy. Now I could click the map button and go in here and start to create a map, but since I've already have one, I'm going to use the node editor to drag and drop onto this reflection layer this is gonna be the layer we wanna work with is a specular reflection layer. We wanna map that weight attribute. So we've got our layer editor right here, right? So this is going. To, this is controlling all the different um, materials or finishes that we have. So if we expand this out, you can see that our specular reflection is going into layer zero. It's our topmost layer. We stack that layer on top of our base layer. So we're gonna go ahead and just expand this out and you can see there's that weight attribute. So what we wanna do is we wanna grab, where is that guy, our reflection here. We wanna grab that reflection, we wanna grab the red, green, or blue value because this is just using HSV on a grayscale image. So we can grab any of these guys because that weight value is expecting a float. So we'll just grab that guy and shove it into weight and now what we have is we've got this material that's going to um, going to do what we want, right? So if we go ahead and we switch this over to Mental Ray, you can see that there's our little reflections happening only where those water droplets exist. So the next thing that we wanna do is we wanna go ahead and make that, that blue material on the back sides. So how do we do that? Well, if you look at this M I, uh, Mila material, the M-I-L-A material, there's actually a slot called back face shader. That's awesome. That means I can just drag and drop another material, Mila material into that, and it will automatically create um, 
a, a double-sided shader for me. So I don't have to go through and create this crazy shading network. It's going to be really simple and it's going to be calculating extremely fast. So we'll grab this new meal of material in here. Let's see where I put that guy. It looks like it came in down here. So let's just drag that guy up there. So this is going to be our back material. We'll just put that same bright blue color there. So we'll grab the out value into the back face material. And you know, in just a few seconds now, you can see the blue coming through on that back side right there already. Boom, boom, it's just already happening. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna jump over to our, um, what do we do, the surface shader? We'll select the objects with that surface shader assigned to it. We're gonna go ahead and assign this new material, this Mila material to those guys. Pretty straightforward. You can see that that ray trace preview is also gone through and updated here. So we can just jump back to a full screen, bring up our render view. We've got that guy saved out three minutes and five seconds. Now, when I hit render, you're gonna notice that we have an issue. And the issue is the fact that shadows are not working correctly when we are texture mapping that visibility cut out. It's a bug that was discovered actually by the subscriber or, or, or sent over to NVIDIA by my, uh, by my YouTube subscriber who was, who was asking for help with this, this workflow. And um, they were able to identify it, reproduce it. So hopefully they'll have a fix, uh, a, full, a permanent fix soon. I'm gonna show you sort of the, the workaround that will, will at least make it work. Um, it just isn't quite as, a, if it's not using the, the latest and greatest as far as shadows are concerned, but there is, there is a pretty quick um, workaround for it. So I'll show you that in just a second. Once this, once this finishes calculating out here. So obviously that was a lot faster, but you can see the problem here is that um, the shadows aren't really working correctly. They're not, they're not nearly um, working at all actually. So what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and we're just going to simply change this guy. If you jump down to scene and you switch your lights from using the new segmented shadows, which were on by default, go roll back to the simple shadows. Um, we'll save this guy out and we'll just render it one more time. It will now actually work, but the render time was cut in a third. We went, we went you know, and it's, it's gotten much, much faster, especially now that we're using the simple shadows here. You'll see it's going to, you know, it's going to crank through this guy. It's going to look, it's going to have the same, um, you know, same settings as far as the unified sampling is concerned. It's got a quality of one set there. It's just a whole lot faster using the Mila material than the standard Maya materials because we've got lots of transparency happening. We've got reflections happening and the overall effect is, is essentially the same, but with the Mila material, it renders three times as fast. So that's, that's the reason why you want to use those Mila materials is they're just, they're just much more efficient at calculating um, inside of mental ray. So there you have it. 46 seconds versus let's get rid of the one with the bad shadows, 46 seconds versus three minutes. And the materials are slightly different, obviously different reflections and things like that. But for all practical purposes, we've got the, essentially the same type of shading network happening and the same type of calculations happening with specularity and reflections on those, on those leaves. And we've, we've more than cut our render time in, in, and it's more than three times as fast. So that's really what it's all about. Um, hopefully that makes sense to you guys. Thanks again for subscribing to Maya Mondays. Cheers, everyone.